Olen Tohto Hillary Vyartanen, ja tämä on Finlandia Fridays. Welcome to Finlandia Fridays. My name is Michael Babcock. I am your host for this weekly interview series here at Finland University. Today we are joined by Dr. Hilary Vertinen. Hilary, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me again. Yeah, it's a second time on the show. We had you on last year talking about Paulo Hamo Fellows, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. Um, and that's one of the many, many things we're going to be talking about today because we had quite a semester, or you had quite a semester. It was a very, very good semester <laughs> for me this term, so I'm pretty happy. And it, and that all makes sense when you think about the fact that this um, this last calendar year we were celebrating the 100th um, anniversary of Finnish independence, yeah. and not everything you did was related to that, but at the same time, Finland was in the news, we were in the news, you were in the news, there's just a lot going on. So let's, let's kind of go through all these things at once, uh, let's start at FinFest. You went to FinFest this year. Okay. Um, where was FinFest and how was that? So FinFest 2017 this year was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is another large Midwestern Finnish town, of course. And so this was a really interesting FinFest because the president of Finland, Sauli Ninista, and his wife, Jenny Aukio, or Haukio, were there. And um, because there was a lot of activities that really connected Finnish Americans and Finnish nationals with this idea of Finnish American heritage. So I got to give a talk, actually, about a... Um, local woman named Mary Mickelson, whose um, daughter Norma Nominelli has actually been quite involved with Finlandia for years and years. Yeah. She wrote a... Um, Norma's a sweetie. She, yes, yeah, she's wonderful. And actually, her mother was a magnificent writer. She wrote a story, not a story, but actually a um, travel book about her travels in Finland in 1950 after the war. Wow. And so I got to talk about um, how it is that Finnish Americans travel and the meaning that you get from going back to your home countries and to your home places after you know decades and decades or maybe after never being there. So that was an exciting time. Um, and of course, there are my dorky times where I'd see the president of Finland and be like, look, Grandma, it's all we need to <laughs> So, you know, we had a great time with that. It it's good to hear you, get, you got to go to Minnesota for the yes, trip. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, and, and there was, like we said, there's a lot of things going on, but one of the next things what you did was um, went to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. That, um, we, we did a lot of promotion for that because that was, that was really exciting. And it was an honorable moment for the entire university to see... Um, one of our professors had down there. So talk a little bit about what that experience was. Well, it was really neat. Back in March, um, staff from the Finnish embassy contacted me to ask if I was to go to a symposium about Finnish language, what kind of topics would I want to hear about? And so I thought they were just asking me what kind of things I like. And so I told them about things that people ask me about Finnish language. Of course, Finnish is a very interesting language and people see it as very exotic and it has all these differences that other languages don't have. And so um, I told them some ideas, and then about six months later, they wrote me back and said, so did you want to talk about one of those things? And so I was very shocked, and very, it was a really pleasant surprise to get to go speak at this symposium. So it was neat because, um, you know, of course, the Library of Congress is, like, the biggest library in the world, and <laughs> it's, yeah. it's right there in Washington, D.C., and, you know, you're representing your nation in a sense, and also Finlandia. And so I was joined by um, Ivy Flint from, the university, from Columbia University, which is Ivy League, and also with um, Daniel Carvinen, who teaches at the University of Minnesota, and we each gave a different talk about different aspects of Finnish. So mine was about Finnish language as a heritage language in the Upper Midwest. And then, you know, we talked about Finnish in the classroom, we talked about Finnish as a kind of interesting and exotic language, and we had a great turnout. And there were a lot of Finnish Americans, because Finnish America is so small, there were a lot of people who knew me from other things. That, and I mean, people from far away, like California and D.C. itself, that, you know, it's kind of neat to think that we all know each other like that. Yeah, what a cool uh, little connection. What was the um, title of the symposium? I thought that title was, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I remember that, I, I thought it was neat. It was cool. It was about the history and future of the Finnish language. And so, you know, Finnish, up until the 1800s, it wasn't really a language that was used for a lot of things. It wasn't really a written language very much. And it just exploded. And it was a part of what ended up leading to Finnish independence, in a sense, because Finnish people were like, wow, we have a culture. And, you know, when Auntie Holma was on, he said, we don't really think we have a culture, but things like developing the language mm -hmm. further helped that to be yeah. something people understood. And we're talking about Antti Homa. He was on Finlandia Fridays last spring. Um, he was here filming an episode for the national what, MTV3 in uh -huh. Finland, which is not music television, but um, it's really like ABC would be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and recently we had our um, episode talking about Finlandia and the copper country in the U.S., um, the Finnish Americans here. Um, let's, uh, we weren't planning on talking about this, but I think it was kind of cool to hear you talk about that episode. What was that like to be interviewed by that and to be on national TV in Finland? It was pretty funny. Um, you know, it was a show that was geared for a kind of younger urban audience, and that's what Auntie told me when he came to visit, was that this was something to let people in their 25, you know, between the age brackets of, say, like 20 to 45 or so, get a sense for this Finnish-American thing that their elders are very fascinated with. And so when he um, talked with me, I mean, he was bringing up this idea of, Finnish people not really having a big self-esteem about their culture. And for me, you know, I mean, I've been studying Finnish culture for 
almost a couple decades now, and so it's like, no, no, you're way off, you know, I mean, there's so much there. So um, that was that was a really fun experience, and it was kind of interesting because the day that it aired, we were, we were able to watch it on the internet, but um, all my Finnish friends kept sending me um, still shots of me on their television <laughs> screens, <laughs> and so that was kind of funny, because people said, hey, look what I saw, and, and people, even a couple weeks later, saw it on the internet later, and were like, hey, that was really cool, so... I had my five minutes of fame. Yeah, that's, and, and you know, and from a university perspective, it was really cool to see us be part of, of that national or the international mm -hmm. um, storytelling. Um, check finlandia.edu slash Fridays. Um, check out the show notes there. We'll have a link to the TV show, so you can watch that. We'll also have a link to the episode we did with Auntie Homa, who is a, a Finnish celebrity and was quite, um, it was interesting to talk to him. He was a, he was a good interview. Um, moving on to the next thing you did this semester, like we said, it was a busy, busy semester for mm -hmm. you. Um, immediately after you got back from D.C., you went over to another conference, that, and this was more in the Midwest, right? Yeah, it was also in Minneapolis, so I got a lot of Minneapolis this fall. Um, as a folklorist, I'm a member of the American Folklore Society, and so we had our annual conference this year in Minneapolis. And uh, it was the same week as the Library of Congress, so it was a lot of flying. I kind of felt like, you know, a jet set kind of person for a little <laughs> bit. But the day after I gave my presentation in, um, in Washington, D.C., I went back to Minneapolis and I gave a talk then about John Wesley Sadio, who of course was a locally famous man who did a series of notable um, jail escapes back about two years ago. And so I was just talking about how people spoke about him through um, conversation, through the internet, through um, news reporting, and the kind of stories that, the folklore that ends up developing about him. And so I was actually surprised because I was approached by the University of, Minne or the University of Mississippi Press and said that, you know, perhaps a book about notable criminals with that chapter and me editing it would be a good deal. And so now I'm looking at writing a book about, and editing a book collection, or, you know, a book um, about notable criminals and the folklore they create. Yeah, that, <laughs> that story specifically, for those not from the Copper Country, is pretty wild. I think he escaped from jail three or four times? Three times, yeah. And, and each time, um, and luckily there was no, he didn't harm anybody, yeah. there was nothing along those lines, so it's easy to, to talk about this slightly lightheartedly, but... Um, it was interesting, and it definitely caught the attention of everybody that was up here at the time. Even people in Costa Rica, because of course one of his escapes yeah. was from there as well. So, yeah, that was fun. Pretty was wild um, experience. So, at the beginning of the show, we talked a little bit about the Paulo Hamo Fellowship Program we have mm -hmm. here. Uh, something we've been doing for, I believe, four or five this years This will now? be the fourth year. This is yep. the fourth year, okay. Um, and very cool program. And exciting to know we're going to be doing it again this year. And more exciting, at least for me, is we're doing it again for next year. So this yes. is going to be five straight years of this program. Mm -hmm. um, let's go in a little bit about what that program is and why students um, are so excited to participate. So this is a great program where I um, work with students to do their own kind of research on Finnish culture and society. And it's open to students of any major. So I have students who are in the health sciences, arts, anything that can apply. Um, it's competitive, and most of the expenses are covered by this Paulo Hamo Foundation grant that we applied for and won for the next two years. Um, and so when we, we learn about Finland through both group readings and individualized readings during the semester, and then in the month of May, we spend about two and a half weeks in different parts of Finland documenting what life and society and history and culture are like there. So we've done all kinds of things, like visited a public sauna, we've met with the mayor of Tampere, um, we've visited several schools now. We've visited with healthcare professionals. We go to museums and learn about how they narrate history of Finland and culture in Finland. Um, and we also even spend like a sauna kind of, or a, a summer camp weekend in a really beautiful town that's a lot like being in Twin Lakes. So they get this really, really broad based idea of what Finland is like and each day we write about it from our own perspectives because that's what I tell them is when we work on this class, you each are gonna become an expert and you're each gonna become an expert in the things that interest you and so the things that interest you and me and the others aren't all the same things, so we really need each other as a team to understand things, but then each day we write about our own individual experiences when we're there. So um, the, we went through the application period. We know who the, um, the recipients are. Um, I can't announce it yet because we have to finalize some details. That would be a little ghost to do on this show, but I'm, I'm really thrilled to get to take some students again and to, get to see Finland through their eyes, because as a teacher, that's really thrilling to get to do this undergraduate research. So Yeah. We'll be, we'll be posting um, on, if you go to finlandia.edu slash Fridays, you can check out the show notes. And on those show notes, we'll post a link to the blog um, where you can see everything they've done in the past year. The blog is incredible. Like, there are so many words, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. photos, mm -hmm. and stories. And so it's very cool to go in there and check out what they've done. Um, I'll give you a little bit hint of what they're doing this year. Um, and then they'll be updating that blog again for next year mm -hmm. as well. So it'll be, it'll be a good thing to follow along with. Um, maybe we'll try to bring in a student or two before you go, and maybe before nice. they come or when they come back too. So that's always that's always fun stuff. Yeah. Um, the final thing we're going to talk about 
is a book manuscript you're working on? Yes. So let's see into that to what, what that is and give you maybe a timeline of what that might look like in best case scenario. For okay. So um, I wrote my dissertation at the University of Wisconsin about Finnish American festival life with a lot of focus on Heikin Paiva, which of course is celebrated here every year. And um, the manuscript, I was invited to turn it into a, a book that's not like a dissertation, not like a giant boring student paper, and submit it to the University of Wisconsin Press. And so I submitted my first proposal and was invited to send on the full manuscript for review. So in a couple days, right at the end of finals week, I'll be hitting send on that. And so it's just, it's really exciting to get to have all these things kind of coming together. And, you know, when you get a book off your desk, it's, it's such a relief. <laughs> like, I'm so tired of looking at it, but I'll be happy that other people see it. In the I can movie. only imagine the feeling <laughs> that would be. Um, well, we're all proud of you here from that university. Thank you. Um, you hear from all the staff that it's, it's wonderful to see these accomplishments be happening. I'm glad to be able to bring it into here. And, and let the world know about these things you're doing and, and letting the world know about the things that Philandia professors can do as a whole mm -hmm. because there's a lot of exciting things happening here. It's part of the reasons we made Philandia Fridays is to, to tell these stories a little bit. I want to thank all of our listeners for being a part of Philandia Fridays. Um, you know, 2017 has been a good year. We made it through the entire calendar year. Of course, we took the summer off but um, that, with episodes. and It's been a lot of fun to get to know these stories. Um, and thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Hillary, for being on the show this week. Thank you. It's been a blast. All right. We will see you guys next week.